welcome to Behind the Velvet Robes. Well, you saw it. It's Fashion Week in New York City, Millennium 2001. We're here and so are you, so stay tuned. about the shows, trends, all the trend looks and special things, the schedule of the shows. Yeah, we need the official that. The official program magazine. There is more shows now than ever. I am just, we got the schedule. There's literally hundreds. Hundreds. It's 110 designers showing. What is going on? Hey, fashion's happening. It's working. Every year somebody writes an article saying it's over. Fashion shows a history. Nobody wants to do it anymore. And every year there's more and more shows. Every season we get a bag, and editors are really piggy, and we love free stuff. So what are we getting this year? Where do we get it? Uh, you gotta go in the press room. All right, let's go. Brian's gonna walk us in. So we have computers here also. So editors can come here, and they can fax their stories. Hey. And this is Pat. She is our champion volunteer. Pat is awesome. I see Pat every season, and she always takes care of me. She's the best. She so, does the races, the runs. What color do you want? Lavender, I want red, I want blue, or green? Green. I think green is the most happening color. I've seen it on the runway already, so I think I'm going to stick with that. It's quite heavy, so be careful. That's good. Isn't this nice? I feel this like plastic. It's great. Yeah. You know, that's very Chanel. This is style. My show is on style. Look how good. Do I look good? Yeah. Cool. Hand lotion. Ooh, awesome. in the door here. That's really nice. T shirt. Look at that color. That's your color. Huh? This is my color. This is fierce. Some makeup. Another bag. Another bag. A bag inside of a bag. Because you know, by the time we leave, we have about 20 bags with free stuff in it. And this will keep this will keep you going. A little energy bar. I need that. A little protein. Well, there's a lot of good stuff in here. And Fern, it's, I a wanna, nice bag. it's really nice. I want to thank you so much. And we'll be seeing you throughout the week. I'll be here. That chicken Calvin. And who are you wearing today? Calvin. Yeah. Miss Calvin. The goddess of Calvin. See you later, Pat. We're going to see some Enjoy. fashion. Go you take care home. now. Great. Have a good Ciao. Day. Let's go, guys. to the Moet and Chandon Cafe and meet Alan Trong, one of my favorite menswear designers. Alan has been sitting waiting for me patiently. He's, okay. It was early. Thank you so much. How are you? Good, I'm good. I'm you so happy you? to see you. Hey, move over. Make some room for me, baby. <laughs> I love, love, love your collection. You totally took a risk. You had feathers, stretch like knitting, like sheer. Right. This is a little extreme. So tell me about your custom and why do you do that? Why do you keep it so? Because, uh, you know, I find there's lots of safe things in the luxury market and there isn't anything that's fun to wear in that level. Tell me about your 
silhouette against the fabric. The silhouette is a little bit slimmer than last season. This time, the sweaters are a bit loose, um, and the shirts are slimmer, closer to the body, not tight. Um, and then pants, narrow leg, and capri. You're going to see lots of capri because capri to me become a stable, so it's sort of like a must-have in a men's wardrobe. I used to see these guys that only wore white shirts. They're wearing a little pink, okay, it's like a light pink or a light blue, but I think they're taking a little bit more. Right, but then, you know, they don't want any shocking color. To me, I think uh, men want to be noticed. They don't want to be looked at. You know, that's the difference. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a I good mean, I, it's true, you know, because I have friends, you know, they said, they told, they told me, um, you know, I wish I, you know, this girl noticed me, you know, in the room, but, you know, but I don't want everybody to look at me. Yeah. Your collection is very young also. It really, I think it's, you know, guys maybe in their 20s and 30s. Actually, um, you shouldn't put age in clothes, you know, if somebody's 50, 60 has the spirit to wear that, why not? That's good. Well, you're looking good. Is this a preview of what we're going to see? Yes, this is my one of my linen pants. Again, you know, my inspiration is from the fabric. And I usually go to women's wear mill to find fabric instead of just walk into the um, men's mill. And I find that it's a bit boring. And I do think there are lots of women's fabric that men can wear, and that's what my um, collection's all about. It's using women's wear fabric and translate to a more wearable um, style for men. Well, whatever you're doing, you're doing it Right, and your stuff is selling, and I love it. Give me a kiss. Thank you. Thank you. Alan. <laughs> They're having a show of 101 Dalmatians. A lot of designers, Betsy Johnson, Nick Graham from Joe Boxer, did really cool costumes for the show. So we're going to find the one of the designers that actually worked on the movie of 101 Dalmatians. I think it's 102 Dalmatians now. So. I don't know if he's in the middle of doing a, an interview, but you know, we kind of barge in. It's very much our style. Oh, hi, we'll just, we'll wait. He's doing an interview. See, we have to wait. Hi, Val. How are, are you? Are you ready for me? We're waiting and waiting. You're just too famous. Put your stuff down. Oh, sorry. What is that? Wait, 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 don't put the, what is this? There's a little thumbnail sketches of the clothes. I have to say that I've been accused many times of looking like Cruella de Vil, okay? <laughs> Kids come up to me all the time and they're like, oh, she's on my doing my And I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't make coats out of doggies. No, I don't. That was one of my favorite movies growing up. But I have to tell you, I always identified with her fashion. I just yeah. thought she was the chicest woman. Oh, they're fabulous. It's interesting because when uh, Dan was first asked to do the first movie, we'd just been working on Sunset on Andrew Lloyd Webber's Sunset Boulevard. And she was asked to do 101, and she said, I don't know, do you think I should do it? And, and I said, well, why not? I mean, it'd be, it'd be great fun. We can both have a lot of fun. And it's the only time in either of our careers when we have last both of us to go way over the top. And what do we think today on the right way? Well, first of all, you're seeing, you know, the Betsy Johnson kids red, which is very amusing and fun. There's a fur fashion parade, which is a joke. I mean, I hope everybody realizes it's meant to be a joke. It's not serious at all. There's a guy called Monsieur Le Pelt, who's a Paris <laughs> fur couturier, uh, who's played brilliantly by Gerard de Bardieu. 
that in the movie she goes to his fashion show. So the clothes from that show will be shown tonight as well. These are from the actual movie. From the actual movie, yes. The whole premise of the film is that she starts in jail at the beginning from the end of the last movie and she's been given a version of therapy so that she hates fur. I like the story. Yeah, I really. Like his story. So at this point she's she's been politically correct, she's she's the good she's the good person. Mm. And then something happens and she suddenly cracks and turns back into 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 Her old self. I think some of those clothes, they would look great on the street. Not made from well, real dogs, but you know, <laughs> that, that was her thing. She was buying all the puppies. Well, no, in fact, in the end, she never actually got as far as making the, the dog go to that no. one. Well, that wouldn't be and, good. You know, the thing that I think is so funny is, is that all of the animal rights activists and whatnot go on about 101 Dalmatians. And the whole point is that the movies are incredibly anti-fur, if you see what I mean. I mean, she always comes to a terrible, terrible end because of her love for fur. This must be one of the greatest adventures for you, obviously, oh, as is. a designer. It is, in my life. No, but I mean, and for Glenn as well, because, well, as I say, I mean, when do you get a chance to to, to, to go as far over the top as it is. You can let your imagination Absolutely. run wild. So you Absolutely. worked really closely with her in well, of everything. Course. Of always. I mean, it doesn't matter what the movie is, your relationship starts with the person and you build from that. It isn't an ego trip for me, designing. I mean, what interests me is that even in something as extreme as this, is designing character and making it. My job is just to make it easier for Glenn to play the part. What else are you going to be working on now? What's in the future for Anthony Powell? Well, my only... I'm not going to tell you. Oh, come on. What do you mean? What do you mean? You better tell me. I mean, dude, this is an interview. You have to tell me something. Come on, don't no, give me a hard time. No, my only superstition in life is talking about jobs before they... You okay. start, it always goes wrong. What have you done? I did two of the Indiana Jones films with Steven Spielberg. Um, I did Tess with Roman Blansky, which was quite a long time ago. I have a good question. When you're doing a period piece, you have to make the clothes. Do you, right. you actually make them. But right. say, like, if you're doing a regular movie right. in today's time, can you just buy clothes in a store or go to a designer and get them? You, you can. It doesn't interest, that doesn't interest me. Terrible. You only uh, make them, you want to design them. I would like to design them, but also I find modern films much more difficult to do than period films because everybody has an opinion. You know, the cleaning lady has an opinion. <laughs> they, and no, I'm not kidding. I mean, it, it's, it's tough. You're doing a fitting with the star and there's somebody picking up pins in the corner and they say, oh, I don't think you look good in red. You know, that's the end of the red costume. <laughs> And it's, everybody has an opinion. Whereas if you're doing a period movie, uh, you say, this is it. This is how they were made. These were the colors they have. This is the shape. This is it. And nobody can argue because they don't know whether it's true or not. Thank you. Good luck. Congratulations. <laughs> Anthony Powell. Love his work. You have to make me something. Okay. With pleasure. Very cruel. It's all yours. <laughs> do you have a fun fashion just doesn't sleep? And neither do we here on Behind the Velvet Rope. Hey, Peter. Hey, Lauren. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What an unexpected surprise. Oh, yeah. 
Your show was amazing. Can we do a little you. like Q and A, a little outside? Sure, of course. Come, I love it. Come Great. on, we're gonna sit right outside. It's a nice day, all right? Beautiful day in New York City. Ah, oh, what a great day. That's beautiful. I'm hanging. Just got him for a really quick interview. Your show, your clothes are so clean, so beautiful. Thank you. And you're getting a lot of buzz now. It's, it's actually really exciting. I mean, spring 2001, which, you know, you just saw was my fourth season. And first time in the tent, so it's, the response has just been really exciting. In Chinese culture, red is, symbolizes good fortune and good luck, so um, I always try to include red in my collection, whether it's like in the lining or a little piping on the hem or else like a garment. Um, so for me, it's kind of like a, a little insurance for the wear, it's good for, you know, a little, a little luck for the day. I love using menswear fabrics and sort of tailoring them in really feminine ways. Just, you know, sort of, you know, work the masculine feminine angle. You worked with some of the big guys. When I was in school, I interned at Michael Kors and, and Calvin Klein. Um, and then my first job out of Parsons was with uh, Blast, Bill Blast, which was, you know, amazing to be just a part of his, this rarefied world. It was just really an honor to be working there. So do you think that all of these designers, because you do clean American fashion, mm -hmm. and if they inspired you, is that the reason why you went in the direction that you went? Because you worked for these people, that was always in you? I think it was always in me. Both my parents were architects, and they were children of the Bauhaus, so in my, our house was like an old catalog. It was everything was at right angles, every meat chair or like, you know. Um, oh, Ado, retentive. Yeah, Fabouzier, Chez, everything was, you know, very, just so. So I was inspired by definitely that, um, you know, sort of graphic lines, architectural sort of theming and that kind of thing. How many seasons is this for you? This is my fourth season. So that's two years? Yeah. Well, it seems within two years, which really is not that long, you've really come a long way. The response in the past two years has been really positive overall, and it, you know, just feels so fortunate to, like, you know, you know, have people really like my clothes. I mean, it's... You're great. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. I'm so glad that I bumped into you. Yeah, I know. Like, it's been so noisy out here. My sound man, Chris. Say hello to Chris, everybody. <laughs> you, did you get all his words? Every, he sounded good, and I sounded... He sounded great. He sounded, <laughs> that was good. I love that. Well, thank you, Peter. I guess I'll let you go back to work and design next season's yes. collection. Next season, around the treadmill. We'll be back. Now we're going to head downtown and meet the legendary designer, Paul Smith, who does the most amazing men's and women's wear. So we have to get a taxi. Fashion limo. Hey, fashion, woo! <laughs> hey, you're insane, look at it. Everybody wants to get into the act. There I am. <laughs> and looking good, if you must say so yourself. The ego gets, is running rampant. <laughs> Yeah, we love elevators. Elevator. Going to the penthouse. Yeah. 610. Oh, look, he's in love. This guy, that is his mind. Ding dong. Hey. Look, it's the man. Hey, you should be on the run. <laughs> okay. Hey. How are you? 
How you doing? Sorry, I was being very good. You are so rude. You Hi. English. Rude Hello. and nasty. Hello. Hi. 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 Glamour. Glamour in the house. Yeah. Right. So did he give you a good interview, Miss Glamour? No, 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 no we just very, We're just getting started, but this he's, is he's a... very amusing. So okay. Far. All right, so we'll just sit, we'll sit and wait. Hi. We'll wait for you because we've been waiting all day, so oh, why no, not? Five more minutes, you're worth it. Ten minutes, whatever. No, 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 you can stay. Don't worry. Well, all right, so. <laughs> okay, go do your thing. We'll just sit here and relax. Oh, no. We were just talking about Monty Python. What did, what's that got to do with you? I th nothing. I mean, it has nothing to do with fragrance or our fashion or anything. So in fact, most of the day I've been here talking about nothing that's related to fashion. It's been a really lovely day. This is good, you know, yeah. because fashion sometimes it's a little too all-consuming. Yeah, I know. I don't, I'm, I'm full agreement with that. Look at this nice suit. Well, it's Look. your suit. You don't yeah. need to label. You know no, who no. you are. Look at this. Do you like for this cup? The, I, Oh, oh. oh, nice cup, eh? That's really yeah. awesome. Yeah, awesome cart. Love it. Yeah. Well, What's it's come possible. to the bedroom? Um, okay. That's a nice <laughs> offer. I haven't had an offer like that all day. Come to the bedroom? Okay. I'm there. Okay. Yeah, I guess. I'm... Oh. Anyway, oh. great boots. Do you love my boots? Fantastic. Well, this is, this is really oh. awesome. I love this. You know, uh, you're the second designer I got in bed. I did this with Alexander McQueen. Oh, uh, so he's, yeah, he's a friend of mine. You're Alexander. not the first. I'm no, sorry right, to tell sorry. you. Well, I might. Uh, Cindy. So you want to come, come and here, hang, out? Come here. hang out? Okay. Hang out. Come sit. Come sit here. Come and sit here. Okay. All right. Glad we have, like, all fashion has. Yeah. So this is what fashion is about. Yeah. I'm with television behind the bill ropes. I'm doing a wacky, wild look. And we have, isn't that great? Yes. We have glamour in the house. And yeah, Miss Perfect. Miss Perfect, yeah. T-shirt yeah. and jeans. Mr. Smith. Th this And Mr. Smith. This And we all look different and we all look great. Yeah. So this is what fashion is about. You know? I think it's really important, the fashion, that you're allowed to express yourself. And um, uh, a lot of the big companies are so programmed into, you know, the big advertising campaigns. This is how you're supposed to wear everything but I think it's very important for us to be able to show our individuality and do our own thing and show our personality through crazy socks <laughs> or you know nice lining <laughs> or perfect body <laughs> great boots you know that sort of thing We're doing very optimistic clothes for next spring for both men and women. Very bold print, very uh, um, easy to wear, luxurious, soft to touch. How long have you been in business? Oh, um, 25 years. What is that, 50 collections? Yes. How do you come up with interesting, innovative clothing that men and women still want to buy after all these years? Because um, you don't follow the crowd, you always uh, um, observe um, by travel. Mostly, you know, I travel seven months of the year. So I'm in India, I'm in, you know, uh, Paris or here now in the States. I'm always looking, looking at colour, inspiration. Like in India, you know, like the women wear all these fantastic colours. Never feel complacent, you know, never think you've made it in fashion, never, 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 never. And, um, you know, my uh, studio is above my store, mm -hmm. so that's fantastic because, you, you know, the people that pay my wages are the customers. Now, you're global. Yeah. You're in Japan. I lived in Japan for a couple of months. You're you're everywhere. You're major. Scary in Japan. Why yeah. is it scary? What I mean, mean? two hundred shops we have in Japan. That's um, two hundred mm. shops. That's amazing. Yeah. How do you do a few looks that? just sell everywhere. I mean, you're global. I think it's because we do a fairly large collection. And, um, well, in fact, we do three collections for men. Jeans, and then more like young guys, and then more classic things like this. And then for women, we do two lines as well. So I suppose 
there's something for everybody. I think you are one of the first designers that I know of to do a whole entire lifestyle store. Like everybody now is getting into shoes and accessories. Yeah. You always did that, always. Right from the beginning, from the very first shop, when I always had the little showcase, you know, with pens or pen knives or some wacky bag. I used to bring carpenter's bags here from New York back to London. I used to, you know, mix things like old things, new things, vintage pieces, because I think, why should anybody come to my shop? What's the reason, you know? And the reason is because they never know what they're going to find. As I'm looking at you, your suit is relatively conservative. Yeah. So if some guy wants to buy this suit and put a white sock or a black sock and a regular shoe and a white shirt, they can do it. Absolutely. But yet they can jazz it up with just a little bit of a color sock and a shirt. Yeah, the idea is that you, you don't frighten anybody off with uh, Paul Smith clothes. You can wear it in any situation and then you put your own personality into it. But your tailoring, I mean, you're known for your tailoring. That's part yeah. of what it is. It's the fabric, the silhouette, but really just the make of it. I mean, yeah. it's exquisite English tailoring, which is what the English are known yeah. for. Now, you have something new. I walked in here, I was like, it oh, smells yeah. really good. Yeah. Oh, no, Can you smell it? It's wonderful. I'm yeah. Mm. Mm. Ah, oh, what's peeking here? Here we have a bottle of his new fragrance, which I love. You know, this is not plastered everywhere with advertisement. Look how beautiful. It's uh, based on aromatherapy oil. So there's a lot of geranium and uh, orange, seed wood. This is men. That's the boys one. Yeah. But you know, that's really nice. Like, yeah. I, everything, it's unisex. It's unisex yeah. these days. I would wear the men's. It's, yeah, I like the men's. I love for the, the yeah, girls as well. This is the girls one. Oh. Yeah. You know, that's really nice. You know what, how come you don't do this really interesting? A lot of designers are going in a less expensive way, like they're doing like a Paul Smith 2 or something. How yeah. come you don't do that? Uh, I don't think, I don't think it's need to any need to compromise, you know? You know, the, my clothes are quite affordable. I mean, they're not cheap because mm -hmm. they're beautiful, but they're not crazy, crazy, crazy price. And so I'm fine as I am. I don't want to compromise if I can help it. I like that. That's good. Mm. No compromising here. Well, thank you, Audrey. Thank you, yeah. Paul Smith. We're hanging at the Mercer, so we can cut because we're going to order some snacks and room service. Yeah, come on. All right. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this stylish edition of BTVR. Come back next week for more fashion, style, glamour, and champagne.